Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here for day two of coverage of the OpenStack Summit in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from noise. We are right on the ground floor here at the Convention Center in Vancouver, getting all the action, talking to all the people, we're out at night, getting all the data, trying to share that and tell that story and give you the straight scoop on what's happening with the OpenStack Summit, what's going on in the OpenStack community. I'm John Furrier. My co-host this week, Stu Miniman, wikibon.org.com analyst. Stu, um, day two's kicking off. Off. Day one was great. I mean, day one had all the, the flair, all the, uh, the, the glitter, all the glam around, the big announcements, you know, federated identity, the certification was a big news, and you're starting to see some community tools and the theme of multi-cloud, right? So again, big day, big splash in the pool on day one. Day two is where we kind of get in and we start unpacking it and understand where the, where the rhetoric is and where the value is and where the reality is. So, Stu, reality is, you know, OpenStack, is it real? How real is it? Where is it? What inning? What's your take? A lot of stuff's happening. What's yeah, John, action? so, so I, I love some of the marketing around this show. Uh, the, the release that we just had was Kilo, which is number 11, so say, turn in you know, OpenStack to 11, man. Uh, but uh, you know, if I look at it from a reality standpoint, uh, the question we've had for the last couple of years is, is OpenStack mature? Uh, Mark Collier gave a great, great keynote this morning, uh, brought on some good customer cases, brought on Google to talk about some cool technology, announced the uh, you know, community app store, which I really like, but if you ask me today, is OpenStack mature? Uh, I'd say that all the pieces are in place so that now we can get mature. I like the DEF core model uh, that they've put in place, uh, what they, they are now calling the big tent, so rather than having integrated release, uh, let me see, it goes through, I've got heat orchestration, ironic bare metal, trove database, celiometer, metering, um, you know, and those things aren't part of the DEF core. The big tent is just going to be really the compute, storage and networking with a few other pieces. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's really, um, you know, the, the core foundational pieces. Explain the and Big then, Ten model, Stuart. Yeah, um, so, so Big Ten, is right, it used to be that, you know, everything, every project kind of went through a cycle, went from something that was just kind of, people were working on it and it eventually got moved into the big, uh, the, 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 the big open stack release and I, I, when I get OpenStack, I get all of it. Um, but as we talk about it, OpenStack isn't one software product, it's really a number of projects that come together, so Big Tent is kind of going to be those base pieces, which is... It's basically what's in the platform. It's, it's what's in the platform. Versus the integrated approach, it used to be the integrated approach, you could add stuff in, and now they put it all into one big release. Right, so, so big I, 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 absolutely. Big so, right, Big Tent, so uh, Mark Collier actually said, you know, we've been struggling, what is OpenStack? Is it a cloud platform, is it a solution, what is it? And he said it's actually an integration engine. Um, and one of the examples I really liked is, you know, of course containers is the hot technology. Can't wait, John, we're going to be at uh, DockerCon next month uh, to really you know, document what's going on there. Um, but if you look at the Magnum project here, what Magnum does is really provides that glue to be able to take either Docker Swarm or Kubernetes and plug that into OpenStack underneath uh, with like heat and that management uh, project there. So um, it, it's really uh, how OpenStack is going to provide that pervasive layer, uh, you know, provide potentially some interoperability there. Uh, and you know, people are going to know what they get when they say they're buying OpenStack, which today is just not the case. You talk to the storage companies and say, oh yeah, we're working with OpenStack, maybe we've done a little bit of testing, maybe we've got some API integration, but you know, what is and isn't OpenStack before wasn't real clear, and I think by the time we come next year to Austin, uh, we will have you know, a much better state, and hopefully we'll be able to say, yeah, it's mature and let's go gangbusters. Stu, so this brings up the question ultimately of the maturity level, and, and you know, my take is, based on my reports and my conversations, it's far from mature. However, we are seeing a crossing of the chasm of OpenStack hype, OpenStack positioning and marketing, to really seeing stuff run in production, and that to me is the benchmark. Demos on stage are live. You have customers announcing in production. So that is the ultimate rubber hitting the road. In my opinion, a great signal of path to maturity. Far from mature in my opinion, a lot of dynamics going on, but the great news is it's maturing. 
And I think that's the key word. So, I, you know, I think if you sing, say OpenStack's mature, no way. Things like the big tent, things like certification, these are the hardening details that need to be there. Yeah, John, absolutely. So last year, I think we thought that you know Nova was you know good and stable. Swift and Cinder were in good shape, so that's got your compute and your storage. Neutron, at least you know, kind of halfway through the show here, I, I feel we've got more of the pieces in place. Had a phenomenal interview with uh, Dave Meyer and uh, uh, Tom Nadeau uh, from Brocade. Uh, talked about what they're doing, what people like Kyle Mestre at HP is doing, what Cisco's doing to help really pull some of the open daylight functionality uh, and uh, you know have that work with Neutron uh, so that we've got you know really the framework to you know help that that networking piece which is you know usually one of the stumbling blocks for any cloud uh, environments I mean think back to the XSPs in the 90s John the reason they failed was you know lack of you know good networking and security so networking needs to be solid and the, the pieces are coming in place uh, and a good piece of the ecosystem you know Red yeah. Hat also Stu, I was there. talking to the boys you last know. night here in the production team we're looking at the editorial angle and we were commenting on what makes the cube different and really what that is is that we're on the ground we get to see all the action you can see people behind us talking there is so much activity, and I think one of the things that's not underscored in the news outlets that aren't here is, literally people sitting on the floor, Stu, you walk in the sessions, it's packed, people are, are literally sitting on the floor with their laptops, the sessions are dynamic, they're meaty, and this is a great sign, and we saw this early on in the VMware community, Stu, you saw that firsthand, when the geeks are paying attention, with full attention, on the floor sitting, packed houses, just absolute engagement on the OpenStack. So, you know, maturing path, definitely, mature not. Is it going to mature? It's moving fast. I think there's a mandate. Y yeah. There's certainly attention. All the geeks are on the ground, literally on the ground, <laughs> studying. The sessions are packed. Yeah, John, I love that. And one of the things, if you talk to the the, the vendors here, um, it's gone from uh, the the people at the big companies that are helping to build this, talking about it, to they've got the customer case studies now, which is always the first indication. We're going to be interviewing a couple of the users, uh, you know, here on our program, uh, because how are they using it? What are they doing with it? Um, you know, eBay gave a phenomenal uh, you know presentation this morning uh, in the keynote. You know, we we've tracked eBay for years, John. Uh, they're they're one of the early you know big users of what's going on open stack, massive scale, of course, not the typical enterprise use case, um, but lots that can be learned there. Um, I, I, I liked what I saw from Google. Um, there was a joke uh, that, that uh, Mark actually said, yeah, hey Google, why are you here? And, and they're like, well, we want to take Kubernetes and put it everywhere, yeah. and we can span between the Google Cloud Platform and a rack space open stack, do some load balancing, do some different things there. The so, game is not uh, over, yeah. I mean, Google's a great example, and this is kind of to our point uh, last night and about the people sitting in the sessions, is you know, this game is unfolding, and, the, and this is a real nuance, right, in this marketplace, and this is worth reporting, Stu, is that you have a seniority level of people who have been in the community, who have been here from the beginning, who have passion, who have a commitment, and are have that open source ethos. Then you got the big whales coming in. You got Cisco here, you got EMC, but EMC recently acquired cloud scaling, so they go up a notch in credibility. Cisco trying to you know, ingratiate into the community. You got e IBM here. So you have the big dogs here, okay? Then you got the purists like Red Hat who have been around for a while. So what you have is a melting pot, a fusion of vendors. And, and there's a real cadence around don't overstep your boundaries if you're new to the ecosystem because there's some self-governance going on in this community where quality of the code and your role in the ecosystem is being watched. So you can do some gimmicks, you can do some marketing, but at the end of the day, this community is very senior and very deep in the early guys. So that's exciting and that's why I think it's still going to have a lot of legs. You know, the founder's still around, you get the core, kernel, but then you got the new entrance coming in. You got real contribution from Cisco, yep. what HP's bringing to the table. This is real contribution. Your yeah, John, so, so I mean, a big question, right, is you know, what is the business model to be able to monetize what's going on in an open source model? Red Hat, you know, took them 15 years to reach a billion dollars. You know, will OpenStack uh, and OpenShift help them get that next billion dollars? And they, they've been making some good moves there. Real good presence here at the show, of course. Um, you know, some of the vendors, it's really going to help them sell their underlying infrastructure uh, underneath it, but they, they have to be contributors they have to be a big piece of it. Uh, so, you know, it's still really emerging. Uh, a lot of these are the services and solution building uh, that we've put together, and as, as I said on the open yesterday, I, I want to see the software get baked more. I want to see, uh, you know, things that can be easily repeatable uh, because it can't be a science project. Uh, one of the things I'm actually happy about is when you kind of poke at, you know, well, okay, did Walmart have, you know, a couple thousand people working on this? It's, no, no, no. It's like, you know, what's it, 10, 20 people working on this, uh, and, you know, the people talking in the keynotes, 
is, you know, this wasn't that they put 50 people and worked on it for a year. Uh, some of these environments, they spun up pretty quick. Uh, the demo for uh, Google with Rackspace, uh, you know, using Kubernetes is something they did in the last week. So, you know, proof of concept, try some interesting things. Uh, as we, we've talked about often, John, it, to be able to innovate, you need to be able to try fast, you know, fail fast, iterate, and move forward. And uh, it's nice to see that OpenStack pieces are getting there because before, that, that's Amazon's story. That's how I can try fast and do some interesting things. And if OpenStack yeah. can help, you, you know, broaden that, you know, base of where I can try and innovate, uh, you know, that, that's a big win for the industry. Stu, I love working with you on this OpenStack um, beat because you're in the trenches, you're totally geeking out. I see you working the extra hours, putting in, in the, the, the troll in the boots yesterday during the, uh, the, 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 the keg party that was going on with the, all the vendors, which essentially, that's what I called it. I happened to be a show here with this big keg party. Tons of beer last night, but you were going around digging around the booths. What's the story? I mean, what's the vibe? Are you seeing venture capitalists here? We saw Menlo Ventures pop up to theCUBE earlier. Um, have you seen any VCs here? I haven't seen a lot of VC action. Either they're you know, huddling away, but is there an investment climate? What's, this, what's the vibe? What are you smelling out there? So, uh, it's interesting. I've talked to Ryan Floyd, uh, you know, a bunch of times from Storm Ventures, and, uh, you know, he, he was really one of the first, if not the first VC, investing in OpenStack and some of the early companies uh, that, that we've interviewed on the program uh, before. So, there's, there's definitely more money pumping in. The VCs are coming in, and especially we saw a bunch of exits over the last year, John. Uh, so, as, as companies are successful uh, and either grow, like Marantis is still growing. Uh, I, I bumped into the Piston folks. Uh, they, they've got some good activities going on here, or uh, the people uh, that you know that have been acquired over the last year. It, it, it does you know put some more interest in there. There are I, I, I was happy to see on the show floor some new entrants coming in the market. Uh, I was talking you know John I do a lot with the kind of converge and hyperconverged space. A little company called Stratoscale actually has some funding in from Cisco Ventures if I remember that right, um, and they're doing stuff with OpenStack and containers yeah. uh, to try to take you know go beyond kind of the virtualization and into that next wave of container in new modern apps, um, which is part of the discussion we're having in general here is, you know, OpenStack can't just be extending virtualization into kind of a cloud-ish platform. It needs to help us get to that next generation. You interviewed Sam Ramji yesterday, talking about Cloud Foundry. We need, you know, whether it's PaaS or Cloud Native, whatever we talk that, how do we drive those new applications? Because that's what drives the new right, business so who's, value. Who's coming in in a big goes. way? You got EMC obviously here with a big, in a big way. Oracle, interesting, and what's been reported certainly out there, hasn't been really kind of unpacked is their Accu-hire, if you will, of cloud, Piston Cloud. Um, or they, their lack of buying them, I should say. Yeah. So as you know, they went under. There was rumors that Business Insider was reporting that they were going to buy it, they didn't buy it, they hired all the engineers. We're going to dig into that story a little bit further, but Oracle has a big booth here. They announced a relationship with Marantis. Marantis is the, the <laughs> bell of the ball here. They certainly have a lot of gravity around their situation. Success is deploying OpenStack. Um, Absera announced this morning a relationship with Marantis. Uh, so Derek Collision last night trying to get him on the cube. Again, a startup, XVMware guy, again, out there. So a lot of stuff happening in the startup ecosystem. So the question, Stu, is are they groping for a position? Is there a path for startups? Is there enough white space? And is it a groping contest if there's some consolidation, if there's some, you know, I mean, Piston Cloud was a really amazing company. But yeah, not, boom, and, and John, absolutely. I, I worry a little bit that with all the big companies throwing a lot of money and a lot of people and buying some of the small guys that they can smother some of that innovation. And if you look at the big tent model, there are some projects that aren't going to be core. And if I'm a developer, for some friends of mine in the developer community that said, if I'm not working on something that's core, why am I working on it? Because I want to do something that matters and, and I want to be able to you know, have an impact. So if uh, you know, I'm going to be outmarketed if I can't contribute. You know, will that stall some of that innovation? And with so many people active in OpenStack, I sure hope it doesn't because you know that that's been one of the drivers here. You know, thousands of people putting lots of time contributing for the greater good and you know profits. Is <laughs> at the end of the day, that's that's what's going to got to drive the and business. And the other thing, that the big story from last year, Josh McKenty went to Pivotal. He uh, was the CEO of um, um, uh, Piston Cloud, co-founder. Um, he went over to Cloud Foundry. Martin Mikos, who we had on theCUBE, was the head of HP Cloud. He's no longer going to be involved in it. He's been pasteurized out at HP. Um, 
that's an interesting move there. So you're seeing turmoil at the top of a lot of the strategy, so it begs the question, there are big chess moves being made, certainly the exits of the top executives signal to me that you know, there's some strategy differences, there's some corporate governance issues, maybe M&A strategy, so if you're an HP, if you're an IBM, you're an Oracle, you have dough, you have M&A opportunities in this interesting dynamic where companies might have talent, AccuHire and or white space for products, so again, this is the changes we're seeing. Your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, John. Uh, so you know, <laughs> I, I'm on the tech side, but when you look at the money, last year I said if you're interested in making 25 to 50 million dollars, OpenStack is a great place for you. Most of the big companies, if it's not a hundred million dollar opportunity at least, they're not going to put a lot of time and effort into it. Last year, HP made an announcement. There, you know, thousand people, billion dollars, putting it in, and I say, how many years is it going to take that to return that investment? Uh, you know, you, you've got plenty of companies where OpenStack is is just so critical uh, to what they're doing in cloud, not just Rackspace, but HP, IBM, you know, Red Hat, a huge push there. Um, Cisco ties into their whole inner cloud, and then that's just some of the, some of the big pieces. So, you know, yeah. th there's there, the money is growing, we are maturing, so, uh, you know, I just expect more and more to kind of feed into this, it's that virtuous cycle. So, my, just a correction to my statement earlier about Oracle, it wasn't cl uh, Piston Cloud, that was Josh McKenty, and that essentially went over, he went over, just as, as a co-founder, he just left and joined Pivotal. It was Nebula that um, Oracle uh, had acquired roughly, as reported by the Register and Recode, about 40 engineers, they just got scooped up. So ne Nebula was a really great company, Chris Kemp and those guys, br brilliant team. Again, AccuHire, mm. Exodus, mm. People are changing jerseys yeah. and teams. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, John. I mean, you, you look at those guys. You know, the, you know, NASA and Yahoo and uh, you know, Rackspace. The people that started this whole effort. Um, you know, we, we want to see them do well, right? You know, the people that take the risks and are the builders out there. We want them to, uh, you know, ha have some success and you know, go do it again. So uh, we're gonna have Mark Collier on in a couple of minutes. He he's been there since since the beginning. Um, so you know, it, it's been a little bit of a changing of some of the faces. Um, when I talked to Christopher McGowan this morning from Piston actually said, you know, there's there's so many people here now that it's not, you know, what OpenStack was a couple of years ago, which was kind of the same group of people that were going every six months to every show. Um, it does feel much more like an industry show. Those users, as you said, are coming in, um, see much more diversity, uh, and I think that that's a real sign of maturity, which I was excited to see. And Stu, this is ultimately back to your original point about the maturization. What's, how mature is a seg segment of the business? I think that is the key point. We will continue to unpack it. And again, we're watching all the moves here in the front lines, final take on the intro for day two. What do you expect to see? What are we going to be hearing? Again, a lot of partnering going on, which is a great signal. A lot of good positive vibes. The demos are live. You're seeing much more customer use cases. What's your take, Stu, in day two? What do you expect? Yeah, so you know, more proof points, John. Uh, you know, some customers we're going to be talking to, the vendors we're talking to, uh, is you know, we really, where are they getting those early wins? What's repeatable? Um, and, and how much can they, you know, they just turn this into, uh, you know, the new platform to move things forward? Um, you know, how is it tying into some of these new pieces like, like containerizations, like applications uh, that, that that are driving analytics? Um, because you know, John, from the application standpoint, it, it it really needs to be kind of that you know NoSQL and big data and some of those other ones that are that are driving new business value. Um, and I haven't heard as much up the stack on the application side as I might expect. Uh, you know, it's it, it being an infrastructure guy by background. You know, a lot of this does sound like what I'm familiar with. I mean, you know, compute and storage and network and management and orchestration, of course, is hugely important. Um, and, and that piece is still a bit immature. Stu, of course, we can't not talk about sports, the Patriots, deflation gate. What's your thoughts? Obviously, you're a Patriots fan as, as well as I, but you go to the, all the games. News is Bob Kraft is, and will not appeal the NFL punishment against his team for deflate gate, although Tom Brady is filing. Uh, uh, an appeal. What's your take on the Patriots? Uh, well, well, so, 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 so John, you know, you, you, you're you're from uh, you know the area originally, and I, I've been a Pat's ticket holder for many years. So uh, sad to see. I'm, I'm obviously you know a bit of a homer when it comes to Tom Brady and the Patriots. Uh, looking forward to the banner being uh, unveiled, and boy, will it be a black eye for the NFL if Tom Brady is not there when you know the Super Bowl champs un unveil it. So um, I, yeah, I, NFL, I think it's kind of ridiculous. An, I think it's an embarrassment to the NFL <laughs> personally. If anyone out there is an NFL fan, has to be embarrassed to be associated with the NFL with the what they pulled with the Patriots ridiculous it's like it's such a technicality it had no relevance to the game I mean it's just the NFL had with an axe to grind for the Patriots 
bringing up the, you know, the, the, the spy cam, you know, jets. It's just an embarrassment. Of course, the Patriots are in the right. That's our position. That's the official cube position. <laughs> Stu, would you, would you say to say that? A absolutely, John. Yeah. All right, so with this cube, we're actually having some fun here. Uh, the venue's amazing. Vancouver, Stu, what's the coolest thing you've seen? Uh, well, I mean, just, I mean, John, <laughs> you know, the people are biking, you're walking around. I mean, the weather has been gorgeous. People have actually been, you know, commenting how much the, the, the sunlight. I mean, we moved the set a little bit, so we didn't need sunglasses today, but it's gorgeous. Three I, I want to go, Stanley Park is, you know, right down around the bend. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to see that before I head back. Um, you know, my wife has been seeing all the sights. She saw orcas yesterday, um, you know, went, went on a boat, uh, you know, so many did local sites. Zip, uh, some zip lining? I did zip lining on, on, on Sunday. That was phenomenal. You flew on the plane back. Oh, plane in the yeah, water. I mean, there's the float plane. It, it's funny. I, I, I talked to friends of mine that went to Paris, and they're like, oh, OpenStack was great and everything. I'm like, so, you know, tell me the sites you saw and everything like that. And it's like, yeah, oh, you know, museum, the Neutron, yeah. uh, you know, segment was really good. It's like, you know, John, we travel to so many of these shows. <laughs> when we get outside of Vegas, I like to see a little bit of the local flavor, um, you know, the, the food, the culture. Um, I, I hope we get to come back to Vancouver more often. Yeah, all right. Well, we're going to break it here for the kickoff segment. We're going to day two. Walt to Walt coverage. We've got some, another two days. we got today and tomorrow. And of course, the big events tonight, uh, a lot of briefings, a lot of happy hours. We'll sit down with CEOs, obviously the HP's having a huge party. Um, HP, again, big presence in the community, an impressive EMC, Oracle, IBM, the big guys, and of course, the, the passionate founders of the community are all active as well. Packed house, all the sessions are here. We're theCUBE, we're bringing you all the coverage. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>